Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. In this episode, I am going to discuss some microcontroller programming, which is not something I've done on this show yet. And what we have here is the Texas Instruments Launchpad. It's a tiny little device. It's available for $15 on Amazon. And I will uh, put a link to it in the show comments. And this device is a uh, programmer and test board for this MSP430G2231 chip right here, which has, I believe, um, 2K of flash and 128 bytes of RAM. And so, of course, since this is C++ Weekly, we are going to do some programming of this device with C++ 14, 17, something like that. The first thing that you're going to want to do if you buy one of these devices is download the Code Composer Studio from TI's website. And you can just go to this tool folder and you can download the uh, IDE for your appropriate platform. Now once you have downloaded it and installed it, you're going to be presented with an IDE that looks a little bit like this. Now I have grabbed the basic standard sample program that simply um, makes a light flash. And it does this by twiddling the P1 output pin, which is uh, pin 1.0. And on the device, we can see here, 1.0 is LED1, and LED1 and LED2 are down here. And it's pretty straightforward to just plug this thing into your USB port and it should come on and it's playing the last program that I put on it which is making these two lights flash back and forth but let's go ahead and tell it to play the project that we have right here so this will connect to the device compile it launch the debugger, upload the code, and we should see the blinking lights stop flashing in a minute. They stopped flashing. And of course, since this is C++ Weekly, we're going to be wanting to look at assembly an awful lot while we can. But it's not that important just yet. So this code starts out by disabling the watchdog timer, and that's important because we don't want the device automatically rebooting itself because we're not touching the watchdog like we're supposed to. And then it goes into this for loop where it toggles the output of that pin and the light comes on. And then it does a 10,000 countdown to add some delay. And I'm not going to walk through that. And it toggles the pin again. So if I hit play, we see the light flashing. Very good. Everything works as expected. Now I'm going to stop this and point out a few problems. First of all, this is not C++. And this is a show about C++. And second of all, um, the compiler that it ships with is some proprietary compiler from TI that's, well, just not that great for what C++ standards it supports. So the first thing you need to do is install GCC. So to install GCC, you need to click on the help item, click on the CCS App Center, and then you need to click on GCC here, which I have already done. And this installs a version of GCC that is specifically catered to this device, but it is GCC 6.2, which is actually very up to date. So we've got some C++ 17, basically all of C++ 14, 11, this is great. So to use this new GCC, what we're gonna need to do is create a new project, And we are going to select the GCC 6.2 compiler here instead of the TI 16.9. So GCC, it is already configured for the particular device that I am compiling for. And we are going to create our project. And we want an empty project without a main.c because we're going to be using C++. Now, as you can see, I already have several other test projects here, but that's all right. So I'm going to create a new file. And 
And those of you that know me know this is painful for me because I don't like using IDEs, but that's okay. We can actually do all this from Linux also, but this is the fastest way to get up started up with this, so I wanted to show it first. So there's a few things we need to do. We need to go into the properties of our project. And the issues are that it seems that the developers of this IDE don't actually like use C++. So we need to make sure we go into our C++ settings. And under here, we have our compiler. So it defaults to uh, dash OS for small size, but I have noticed consistently that dash O3 actually generates smaller binaries than OS does. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on O3 here. And then we need to set our diagnostics options. And you'll notice that it has dash W all, but it doesn't have W extra or any other option. Indeed, it doesn't even let you choose what version of C++ you want to be using. So we're going to have to add a few other flags for the stuff that we want to do. So we've got W extra. Let's add that. We're going to add dash std equals C++ 1Z so we can get some C++ 17 features. And we're going to hit apply here. And that's good. And for the sake of this test, we are going to start by taking this blinking sample, and then we're going to update it with some C++ goodness. So we've got it here in our C++ compiler. And first of all, I, I really don't get this for loop construct here. And this isn't really a C++ or a C thing, but I'm just going to convert that to while true. And I don't know if you noticed, but in the last build of this, we're actually getting a warning that this statement was never executed. So return zero is not only unnecessary, it's arguably incorrect in this code because we're never returning from main. So let's just get rid of that. And couple other random cleanups. So now we've got this while loop that's actually spread across four lines when really all we're trying to do is count down from 10,000 using a volatile. Volatile is important because otherwise the compiler would optimize this code away and our for loop would go away or our while loop would go away and we would simply have no delay. We need the volatile. But we can do it like this. And that should get us basically the same thing. Let's play this and make sure that it does run. So F11 is the uh, shortcut for running this. Make compiled, connecting to the device. And it automatically gives us a breakpoint at the top of it. Let's go ahead and just hit play and make sure we're getting, yep, we're getting the same blinking lights that we were expecting. And see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I promised some C++ goodness. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we are toggling the first bit, which is the zeroth output pin on port one with this. And let's just say we want to do, I don't know, um, let's make a little lambda. So this should do the exact same thing. We will stop the currently executing run of it and we'll give it another go. Compiled with no errors. And we hit play and the blinking lights are working as expected. If we pause and break into this, we can do a little bit of investigation and see 
that our code for our lambda has completely just gone away. It has been inlined here in this symbol, but it seems that it has been inlined, and it also seems like the compiler has done a little bit of loop unrolling, which maybe OS would have gained us something there instead of O3, but you know, whatever. It's all right for what we've got so far. Let's see if we can add a breakpoint just to prove that our lambda is being hit as we expect. We hit play again. We come into the breakpoint. The light is on. We step over it, and the light goes off. So there you go. This is very basic uh, C++ 14 on the TI MSP 430. And uh, this works, and we're going to see if we can take it to a slightly more advanced example in a little bit. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.